What's up guys, Ryan here. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the KDP upload process. So this screen should look familiar by now. Hopefully you're signed up for KDP. So go ahead and click the plus paperback sign to begin uploading a book. So in my previous videos, I walked you through how to do things like grab book interiors. I did like a general introduction to KDP. Uh, I walked you through a couple options for designing book covers. And today we're going to bring that all together and go through the process of creating a listing on KDP. And by the way, when we finish this, our listing isn't live yet. It still needs to go through a manual review by a human. Whenever that's done, we should receive an email either letting us know what we need to fix or that it's live. So here we go. We're going to start with the uh, paperback details first tab language. We're going to keep that set to English book title. So we're going to work off this example right here. Um, that I made so it says here's to new beginnings so this text has to match the book title exactly all right so your covers have to have some text on it whether it's like on the cover or on the spine but it needs to have some text and then that needs to be reflected here in the book title now the subtitle is a little bit more open-ended and what we can do is uh, just describe the book in a little bit more depth so what I would recommend, since this is going to be brought together on your product listing on Amazon, the title is what's shown first, and then it's a semicolon, and then it's uh, the subtitle. So this typically, like the title factors in uh, to your search engine optimization within Amazon pretty heavily. So you want to include some keywords. So um, to start, we could say six by nine journal for writing down uh, daily habits, diary, notebook, and then maybe put a parenthesis and say like gift for, or maybe we say like outdoor adventure themed um, book, something like that. You know what I mean? Something that Try to string keywords together like what I put in the parentheses here kind of describes the background with the, you know, outdoor adventure feel. Uh, and it works in combination with the title. So maybe someone finds us by searching for here's to new beginnings. I didn't even put an S there. Whoops. Here's to new beginnings uh, book. Here's to new beginnings journal. Here's to new beginnings diary. Or maybe they find us by searching like outdoor adventure book, outdoor adventure journal something like that. So we're just, and by the way, you could have up to 256 characters, but I have very seldom, if ever, used all of those. So um, just as a disclaimer, like you can add quite a, quite a bit of text here, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't think you need to like key, overly keyword stuff the title, especially because like I think most shoppers are on mobile these days and they tend to not see the full title in search results anyways. Uh, you'll get like a condensed version of it. All right, series. So you can skip series. You can skip edition number. Jump down here to author. So I tend to only fill out the first name and the last name. So in this case, for our book here, um, I might say like New Beginnings Publishing. So first name I put New Beginnings, last name I put Publishing. Um, you could move beginnings to middle name if you wanted to, but I'm going to keep it there. All right, contributors, I'm just going to skip this as well. It's main, this is mainly for like self-publishing real books with real content, not really for KDP low content books. All right, description. So you can use HTML for uh, this. I should have some prepared over here on my side monitor. So um, I'm just going to grab like some basic HTML. What I did here on this first line is I uh, grabbed the book title. And I just put it inside of a paragraph tag with a B tag for bold. So that'll render as bold. And then beneath that, it says like this 120 page journal uh, in features 120 pages, six inch by nine inch, white color paper, a cover page, a glossy finished cover for elegant professional look and feel. Uh, and I mean, I just, you can use, feel free to use this. Just keep in mind, if you decide to use like matte finish cover, then you might want to say a matte finish cover, right? And if you change the trim size from six by nine to something else, just make sure to change that. Same with page count. Same with if you use a uh, different color paper, use cream color paper, just fit it to your, uh, to your book. So actually I'm going to do matte and then I'm going to do cream. 
All right, and then I'm gonna copy this in here. So when they see this on the uh, product page on Amazon, when it's live, the HTML will render be rendered by the web browser. So it won't show like the P tag, the B tag, the UL tag, the LI tag, etc. All right, publishing rights. I own the copyright and hold necessary publishing rights. Keywords. All right, each of these fields here, you have up to 50 characters to describe your book. These are these function like backend keywords. If you're familiar with selling on Amazon through Amazon FBA, um, these are just gonna get your this is gonna get your listing indexed on more keywords and get you more visibility. So it's in your best interest to fill these out um, with words that you think are associated with what someone might be searching that would find your product and buy it. All right, so I wouldn't want to like put something random and unrelated. Like I wouldn't want to put cookbook. Because I'm not selling a cookbook. I'm selling like a low content journal. But I might put like um, camping or maybe like gift for camping lover. Uh, you don't need to put commas, plurals. Uh, just, you know, you can exclude those to save characters. Um, you could say something like Christmas gift, birthday. It's okay to put synonyms as well. So synonym, finder, and say... Um, adventure so they say experience exploit i don't know if exploits what we're looking for feet scene trip uh chance contingent so you get the you get the uh the gist like basically you want to so here's the thing you don't want to spend forever on these so it's also okay to put synonyms of the word journal all right so like, and if you want to look up synonyms for the word journal, well, that could be applicable to every book that you upload that's a journal. All right, so journal. You could say uh, daily, diary. I think we already put diary up here. So anything that's in your title, guys, you don't need to include again in your keywords. Uh, so it's not going to do you any good to do that. But um, what did we say? Uh, daily. So daily, you could say like record keeping. So you can see I ran out of characters there. So we could say keeping here. So basically what I'd recommend doing is filling out some of these boxes with synonyms that you can apply to every single upload. And let's say you use like five of the seven boxes for those purposes. So that could be like synonyms for book, journal, notebook. It could be, um, it doesn't have to just be synonyms, by the way. You could put like birthday gift, Christmas gift, secret Santa, any of those things. And make it so that you can just pull up Notepad and copy paste into the five boxes really quickly for all of your uploads so that you don't spend more time than is really necessary on the keywords because these aren't going to necessarily like keep in mind like this is their saturation here. So the likelihood of your back end keywords really like driving a sale is lower than if you have a good uh, title and subtitle. Like your title is going to be weighed heavier in regards to like keyword matching versus what someone searches and what Amazon's algorithm associates your listing with. So it's definitely worth filling out the back end keywords, but try to streamline it. Save yourself time so that you can get more journals up as opposed to spending more time on back end keywords. So I would say five of these boxes, you should be able to just copy paste the generic stuff into. And then the six and the seven. Go ahead and write in synonyms related to your design. So again, in this case, like adventure, outdoors, camping, whatever. All right. So then move on from keywords. Like I'm not going to spend all the time to fill these out. All right. So for categories, we're going to choose uh, literary collections and then we can do diaries and journals as the first. And then for the second, we'll do, um, where is it? Nonfiction, uh, self help, and then personal growth. And then we can put either like general or success, whatever you think. I'll put general. And those are just two generic ones for low content notebooks. You can categorize it however you feel, especially if your interiors are different. You can find a better category that's more well suited to what you're doing. Um, but I think these two are good for just generic empty journals all right adult content 
if you have like any curse words or any real adult content inside the book, hit yes. Otherwise, it'll just get rejected. Uh, this one has no curse words, nothing like that. So I'm going to put no. I'm going to hit save and continue. All right. And then we're on the uh, step two paperback content where it says print ISBN. Just click assign me a free KDP ISBN and then click assign ISBN. All right, boom, good to go there. Publication date, uh, we can just leave this blank and it'll uh, autofill with today's date. All right, so print options. You can't really do anything wrong here. Uh, it's really just like personal preference. So I'm going to do uh, black and white interior. We said we would do cream paper in this case. Uh, six inch by nine inch is what I have the cover and interior optimized for. So I'm gonna leave that. Bleed, I'm gonna put yes. It tends to just look better. Um, with bleed and paperback cover finish uh we talked about doing matte in this case so glossy uh is just that it's glossy uh people have said that it looks that maybe glossy is more appropriate for like a younger kids book whereas you know most adult books like think about something you'd carry around with you at work you don't typically see people with like shiny book covers so matte is probably more appropriate if it's something like this where um you'd imagine probably adults carrying this book this journal all right manuscript so i will upload the uh, interior that i have prepared already i'll show you what it looks like real quickly so very basic very generic does not include a cover page i think i'm going to do a separate video though showing you how to create um interiors using a couple different tools where you can make like cover pages and then have the journal follow and stuff like that uh, in the future all right so i'm just going to load up that interior All right, and then down here, book cover. Uh, we don't need to use the cover creator because I've already created a cover. So I'm gonna click upload a cover you already have. Click upload your cover file, and then I'm just gonna pick this one right here, which is the one we've been looking at. And this might take a while, so I may have to like fast forward this in the video. Um, they've actually, it seems like they've improved the upload time recently though, which is good. Uh, but it can still definitely take uh, a minute with uh, with regards to the uploading and preparing. And then when you hit that launch previewer, you really have to be careful about when you click that because it could take up to like 15 plus minutes. It tells you to like make a sandwich. So uh, we'll just wait through this right now. All right, there we go. So the cover's uploaded as well. And now you're going to have to uh, click this launch previewer button. If you try to skip it and click save and continue, what's going to happen is it'll throw an error and say, please preview and approve your book. So what it's going to do is in the previewer, it's going to stitch the cover and the interiors together. It's it's doing it digitally. It's not stitching anything in real life, but um, it's going to let you preview what the book's actually going to look and feel like. And you can approve and then move on to the last step where we set the price and stuff like that. So go ahead and click launch previewer. And just so you guys know, this is where uploading to KDP really differentiates itself from uploading to like Amazon merch or any other print on demand platform that you've ever heard of really that I've ever heard of because this can take as long as like 15 minutes. I've seen it take. Um, it maybe just depends on like the server load that it's experiencing right now with other people uploading to KDP. I don't know, but uh, you can actually, just as a suggestion, you can upload on other tabs simultaneously with Kindle Direct Publishing. So while this tab works, you can go ahead on your browser and hit Control T and start uploading another book if you wanted to. That way it's maximum efficiency. Or you can go and like, honestly, I've seen this thing take so long that it says like, go make a sandwich. So it's really your call. You know, if you need to go do something else, go do that. Um, but also, just so you guys know, stay tuned. In a couple days, I'm planning another video where I'm going to walk you through how to automate the upload process to KDP. So that's really, honestly, the most valuable video I'm going to show you because it will literally give you back hours and hours and hours of time for you to do whatever you want with, um, which is like the greatest gift you can give yourself. So anyways, I will uh, wait for this to finish and then I will come back and we'll wrap this up. Just checking back in, six minutes have passed and this thing is still spinning. So I just wanted to give you guys an update. All right, so that wasn't too bad. It took about seven or eight minutes. Uh, I think according to the clock, it took seven minutes. So I've definitely seen it take twice as long, so that's not bad. 
All right, so here we go. We have the quality check. Honestly, I don't ever click anything through here. I just hit approve and we move on. Because we, you know, our interior is the same exact design. Um, well, sometimes I guess the top, if we're using the journal interior that I showed, it's literally like extremely predictable. Um, only one little thing changes on a page to page basis. So we don't need to be like previewing the book. We know how it's gonna look. All right, so we've completed this step. Let's go save and continue to get to the last step. Uh, it shows us our printing cost is $2.29 for amazon.com. Uh, but we don't even need to worry about that. The pricing takes place on this third step, paperback rights and pricing. So for territories, leave it at all territories, worldwide rights. This is essentially going to allow us to make money by these books getting listed on additional marketplaces. Um, where I know it lists them somewhere. So it says six marketplaces here, amazon.co.uk, .de, .fr. Uh, so um, United Kingdom, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, and Japan. But if you go to the KDP like logged out screen, it lists additional marketplaces. Like I'm pretty sure it says like India and Australia. So I don't know if that's, you know, not listed here for a reason or if they just need to update things, but you do get a lot of exposure. It's pushed beyond just amazon.com. So it's a really great opportunity. People have been sleeping on KDP, but there's a lot of money to be made here. All right, so pricing and royalty, um, it's really up to you. I'm usually a fan of pricing things low to start to give buyers a reason to choose buying our product over a more established product that's very similar that maybe has some positive reviews if price points enough to convince them to try our product that's a great thing because with amazon the way you get organic rank is building sales history building positive feedback and converting customers so essentially we want to do all those things and if a low price point is going to help us get initial sales traction a higher conversion rate and maybe even happier customers because the price was low then that's a good thing it's a win 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 so i have this prepared right here for six by nine hundred and twenty page journals with white interiors this is how because all those things are variables that can factor into pricing guys just keep that in mind uh at 5.95 you'd make a dollar 28 cent royalty so i'm cool with pricing your book at six bucks you know 5.95 at 6.95 you make a dollar 88 795 you make 248 895 you make 308 995 you make 368 so there's no reason if you have a bunch of like five star reviews you can up the price of your book there's no problem in doing that at all um these are still really affordable like 10 bucks is nothing plus with prime people get the shipping for free but maybe to start we just price it at 595 you know it's there's really no harm done either way it's it's minor oops got to remove the dollar sign there uh, it's not, you know, $1.28 is nothing to write home, home about. Like, it's nothing to get super excited about. But if you can do this to scale, like, if you can make 10 sales a day and make 15 bucks or, you know, what, 13 bucks, whatever. So then we're going to want to check this expanded distribution checkbox. And what this essentially does is allows people to um, reach more readers by distributing your paperback through bookstores, online retailers, libraries, and academic institutions. Just getting more exposure. Um, you don't get paid out at the same rate. You make less money. So it looks like we're only making a nine cent royalty in this case. So this is where having a higher price point is definitely more beneficial. But at the same time, like a sale is a sale. So there's no reason not to check expanded distribution. All right, terms and conditions. Uh, again, nothing to do here. Just skip that and click publish your paperback book. All right, guys, and here it is. So your paperback has been submitted. Here's our title. As you see, we keyed in the title here. It puts in that uh, semicolon automatically. And then our subtitles right after that. By New Beginnings Publishing for $5.95 USD. It'll be available on Amazon's Marketplace in the books category. Uh, and then it says, next, we'll review your book to ensure it meets KDP guidelines for book details, content, and quality. If it passes our review, it can take up to 72 hours to be available for purchase on Amazon. If it doesn't pass our review, we'll email you. So during the review, the book will appear as in review on your bookshelf. You can change your book details, content, and pricing after the review is done, but you may have to resubmit your book to ensure it meets our guidelines. So the thing is like when it's live initially, um, it will essentially like not be available for sale which it still has, it's weird. It like has a product listing. It's almost like it's out of inventory, but it doesn't say out of inventory. 
Um, but after a couple days, it fixes itself and then it can be uh, purchased by anybody. So pretty cool, guys. Very easy way to create products for sale on the world's number one e-commerce marketplace. And the best part about it is it's passive income. If someone buys this, we don't have to do anything. We literally sit back and just get paid. We don't have to go and worry about you know, hiring employees and buying machinery to stitch these books together and ship it out, right? Like we don't, we just sit back and get that uh, royalty deposited into our bank account once a month. So that's it for this video, guys. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, you can always hit me up below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Also, stay tuned. I have another video in the KDP series coming soon that's going to walk through the Amazon advertising setup process so you can advertise your books using Amazon sponsored products. That's going to drop in a few days and I hope to see you there. Passive income school is open. Enroll now at ryansmethod.com. Thank you.